this lesson is going to be an extension of the video that you should have just watched on how interest rates, changes in relative interest rates between the U.S. and somewhere else, change the financial capital flows from the U.S. or somewhere else. So I'm assuming that you've already watched that video, and we're going to discuss in terms of the graphs here, or graphically, we're going to illustrate how changes in interest rates affect the value of the dollar and its relative currency. In this case, we're going to use euros in the foreign exchange market. We're going to assume that interest rates, or the rate of return that people, can, people, businesses, and governments can earn on their surplus savings, is now higher in the U.S. relative to Europe. So where's money I'm going to want to flow? Financial capital is going to want to flow to the United States in order for foreigners to invest in those financial assets in the United States, they're going to have to exchange their euros for dollars. So let's look at initially which market is going to be affected. And obviously because money wants to come here, the market for euros is going to be affected first. So Europeans want to invest in the United States, but they have euros. What's a European to do? Well, they're going to have to go to the foreign exchange market and exchange their euros and get dollars. So, in the foreign exchange market, what is changing? The demand for euros or the supply of euros? Well, they're giving, they're exchanging their, their euros for dollars, so the supply of euros is increasing in the foreign exchange market. So, in the market for euros, our supply of euros is increasing. We know when supply increases, the supply curve shifts to the right. So, the supply of euros shifts to the right and establishes a new market equilibrium, quantity of euros, sub one, and we have a new price. Now, we're not sure exactly what that price is, but we started out, just like we did in the last video, at parity, that one, that, that one, euro, exchange, one euro exchanges for one dollar and one dollar exchanges for one euro. And that was until we had this change in relative interest rates. So now we want to look at how that valuation is going to change. Just read the graph. We shifted the appropriate curve, shifted to the right. We know that the dollar price per euro is now something less than it was before. So our dollar price per euro, sub one, now something less than a dollar. Something less than a dollar, an easy number, would be 50 cents. So now what this is saying is, how many dollars does it take to buy a euro? It was one dollar, but now it's only 50 cents. It's a good deal or a bad deal? Well, depends on which side of the fence you're standing on. If I'm going to Europe, now, instead of giving up a dollar to buy a euro, because of this interest rate effect, it didn't affect me at all. Um, if I want to go to Europe on vacation, instead of giving up a dollar to buy a euro, now I only have to give up 50 cents. Good deal, right? The euro is on sale. It's priced less than it was before. Now, let's go over here and look at the market for dollars. The Europeans got rid of their euros, but they want dollars. They demand dollars. They desire dollars because U.S. financial assets are more desirable. So, the demand for dollars in the market for dollars is going to increase. The demand is going to increase. The demand curve shifts to the right. So, we have a demand for dollars sub one. Read the graph, relabel your equilibrium points. Their quantity of dollars, sub one. But more importantly, what happened to the euro price per dollar? The euro price per dollar, or how many euros it takes to buy a dollar, is now something more than one euro. Well, how much is it? If you remember, I said that these numbers are reciprocals. So if we know one, we know the other. If this one's 50 cents, we know the reciprocal of 50 cents is two. So it's going to be two euros. Kind of crowded there. The euro price per dollar now is two. Oh, what's a European to do? Now it costs them twice as much euro, twice as many euros to buy a dollar as it did before. So now to sum this all up, after we had the interest rate, relative interest rate change, U.S. financial assets becoming more desirable. In the market for dollars, can we say the euro 
has appreciated in value or depreciated in value. Well, I used to only have to give up if I was a European. I only had to give up one euro to buy a dollar. Now I have to give up two. It doesn't seem like it's such a good deal. My money only buys half of what it bought before. So I can say that my euro has depreciated relative to the dollar. Now let's go back over the market for euros. And again, after this thing, this interest rate effect took place and it affected people with big money, not me, um, per se. Um, but now how did this affect the price of European stuff or my ability to buy euros? Well, it got to be a better deal, right? I only have to give up 50 cents to buy a euro as opposed to a dollar. So I can say, from the dollar perspective, that the dollar has appreciated. relative to the euro. Does this make sense? All right. In subsequent videos, when we get there, we are going to look at how does this affect, how, do the, how does this change in relative uh, values of currencies affect imports and exports? That'll be an extension of another lesson, but I hope you get this. And in just a second, I'm going to do another video um, to uh, do the reciprocal. U.S. financial assets more desirable, less desirable. Foreign financial assets more desirable. What's the corresponding effect? Although you can probably guess right now, um, I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you.